the Dinah Shore Program, rebroadcast for the American Armed Forces and their allies, with Keneally Otis Skinner and Roland Young, Robert Emmett Dolan and his orchestra, the Joseph Lilly Singers, and... Dinah! Dinah Shore. The one I love belongs to somebody else. He means his tender songs for somebody else. Somebody else I bet they're not so cold For somebody else It's tough to be Alone on the shelf But it's worse to fall Everybody, this is Dinah. <laughs> Say, Harry. Yeah. Did you hear the big news about our boy Wally Brown? No, what, Dinah? Well, he just bought a half interest in a detective agency, and <laughs> he thinks he's another Dick Tracy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if he's Dick Tracy, I'm Prune Face. Now that takes care of Prune Face. Which way did Flat Top go? <laughs> <laughs> it's Wally Brown. Inspector Brown, cap, cape, pipe, and corn. Boy, am I tired. Am I worn out? For weeks now, I've been tracking down Dillinger. <laughs> well, Wally Dillinger's been dead for years. I know, but I like to keep busy. You know what I mean. <laughs> well, listen. Here's a tip for you. The next couple of days, Wally, you better keep your eyes open. Yeah? Why? You look awful silly going around with them shut. <laughs> Elementary, my dear Shore. Elementary. Oh, yeah, the phone, the phone. <clears throat> Inspector Brown speaking. Yes? Yes? No? No? Yes? No? Okay, thank you. What was that? I just took a civil service test. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I'm off. Dangerous killers on the loose uptown. Where are you going? Downtown. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, Diana and Harry, I'll need you as my assistants. Come on, let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go. Say, Wally, I think we're on the trail. See that strange-looking house over there? What's so strange about it? There's a vacancy sign on the front door. Oh, I see. <laughs> Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Hold that vacancy for me. I'll be right down. <laughs> hey, Inspector Brown. I just saw a man peeking through that window. Okay, pull over to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? No curb. <laughs> well, come on, let's go into the house. I'll open the door. <laughs> mm, it's spooky in here. Shh. Hand me my flashlight. There's somebody in one of these closets. Nobody in there. Nobody in there. Close this door, I'll fill you full of lead. Nobody in there either. <laughs> hey, Dinah, Wally, come into the living room. Oh. I found a corpse. Look, the fingerprints on the dead man's shirt. Well, he was lucky to get it back in the laundry at all. I mean, I'm having trouble. 
<laughs> All right, now let's reenact the crime. Now, first we'll take... Um... <gasps> Wally, look, the corpse is moving. Lie down, Bob. We're not ready yet. I mean... <laughs> Well, let's see. Harry? Yeah? You'll be the butler. All right. Diana, you'll be the maid. Okay. And I'll be the mean little kid. <laughs> now, Harry? No, look, Inspector Brown, you'll be the murdered man. Huh? Well, uh, all right. Now, we'll assume the victim is sitting in his living room reading the evening paper. Right. He switches on the light and starts to read. Yeah. Hmm. Raining in Miami again. <laughs> uh, beg pardon, sir. Your tea is served. Why did you drop that poison in the cup, Meadows? Tonight, I'm going to murder you. Why, Meadows? Uh, 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 tonight, I'm going to murder you, sir. That's better, Meadows. <laughs> Ring for Katrinka. What is it, sir? Katrinka, if I should die tonight, you will be taken care of in my will. I will? You will. I will? You will. I will? You see, this is a contest to see who has the strongest will. Let me see. <laughs> Katrinka, pour me another cup of tea. Qu'est-ce que c'est je vous parle de bois pour que de français on? No, just one lump tonight. I don't want to. <laughs> Look, uh, Wally, this reenactment is getting us nowhere. Hey, well, hey, the lights! Who turned oh, off the lights? Oh. Oh. What was that? One of those Bobby Sox kids. I mean, there's a. <laughs> Listen, there's an air of mystery about this house. <laughs> what was that? Bulldog Drummond. <laughs> Wally, the murdered man. He's alive. Hey, what's going on here, anyway? Oh, look, this is ridiculous, Detective Brown. You have no case here. Well, this uh, man is alive. Well, I'll soon fix that. <laughs> now, let's go on with the murder. I mean, we're having... <laughs> Now, where were you on the night of the 16th? So you represent the long arm of the law. You couldn't even send a salmon up the river. Oh, how you talk. Why, I sent a... I've even had a... And I didn't want it either. I mean, <laughs> I'm famous. Why, I even tracked down a boy. Boy, uh, boy, were they a yellow bunch of... And bananas are tough to get. I mean, you can't even... <laughs> even Scotland Yard is after me. They are? Sure, but they can't prove a thing. I sent... Uh, I even sent my brother up the river. He's been up the river so many times, they call him showboat. Oh, I, um, I saw him in prison the other day. I said, what's cooking? He said, me, at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Well, he was just as happy as if he was in his right mind. One night we were playing cards in my office. Louie the lip crept up and cracked me over the head. Blackjack? No, just a friendly game of pinochle. <laughs> hey, who turned off those lights again? Oh, dear. Wait a minute, fellas. Oh. I think there's somebody in this room besides us. Oh, well, uh, Diner, uh, you're holding my hand, aren't you? Harry? You got a hold of my hand, haven't you? Harry? Are your fingers touching mine? I don't know who's shaking hands with me, but I wish you'd come back and get the hand. I mean, it's kind of... There's a song in the Warner Brothers pick to thank your lucky stars. There's a chain and the link between the girl over here and her boy over there. All day long she goes around in a fog and she'd be lonely, except that her dreams are bright and warm, and like sunshine, they chase the fog away. And when a girl finds comfort in her dreams, you can bet that New Caledonia is just next door to New York, and Sicily across the street from San Francisco, and war's bridge of time and space become shorter. Here's that song. A dreamer, a dreamer, I reckon that my name. But how am I gonna see you unless I dream all day? All the long and miserable day they call me a dreamer. They tell me it's a shame how lazy I seem. But how am I gonna hold you unless I dream? Among the trees Like I didn't have a chore to do And I let the summer breeze Like a real and true Kiss from you A dreamer, a dreamer 
I reckon that my name quite changes what for I wanna stay a dreamer till your home once more Speaking of lovely ways to spend an evening, what do you think William and Mary are doing right now? Well, sir, a little bundle came to the house today, and they don't know what to feed it. Charcoal biscuits or horse meat. We find both William and Mary in the doghouse tonight, presenting Cornelia Otis Skinner and Roland Young as William and Mary. Mary? Oh, Mary? Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Oh, Hello. Did the dog arrive? Indeed he did. Will, how could you? How could I what? Suddenly plunk a dog on us like that and out of a clear sky. Not out of a clear sky at all. Out of Lassie Girl by Laddie Boy of Chopin. <laughs> what the pedigree says. Besides, I phoned you he was coming. I know, but it was like phoning to say at 12 o'clock, go look on the front steps. There'll be a baby in the bulrushes. <laughs> a dog's a big problem. Well, well, you learn to love this little fella. Is he cute? Mm, yes. Well, anything wrong with him? Well, he doesn't appear to have hydrophobia or anything. Does he, does he make friends? Make friends? He floors them. <laughs> Fine. What time did he get here? At noon, a moving van backed into the drive and disgorged a crate large enough to carry a sofa, only it contained the dog. <laughs> Splendid. He's on the large side, eh? He's on the large all over. Good. Arrive in shape? Yes, indeed. A most extraordinary shape. 
<laughs> Will, just what breed of dog is he? He's, um, puppy. <laughs> well, when he emerges from this 50-pound cocoon stage, what'll he be? Why, uh, Jim Robinson gave him to him. That's hardly an answer. Jim Robinson might have given you a giraffe. He raises them, you know. Giraffe? No, these dogs. They're some sort of border retriever. I think this one's mother strayed a bit beyond the border. <laughs> Where is he? Out in whatever he's left of the backyard. Well, well, the little rascal. Full of life, is he? Only because I don't know how to use your six-shooter. <laughs> Mary, I thought you liked dogs. I adore dogs, but in these times, suddenly to be saddled with a great bounding animal who'll eat us out of house and home, do you realize the problem of feeding a dog that size? What was meat rationing? No problem at all. Give him leftovers. Leftovers? He won't leave any food to leave leftovers with. <laughs> I mean from. Oh, you know what I mean. Well, I can't say I do. He's oh. eaten the chop I planned for my own lunch, a plate of cookies Flavella had placed on the lower shelf, and a slice of my golf shoe. William, the creature's a wild maniac. Oh, just puppy spirit. I'm glad to have a dog. Yeah, man's best friend, you know. Just what we needed to make our home complete. Yeah, I don't know how long it's going to stay complete. You realize, of course, he isn't even housebroken. Well, that's nothing. All he needs is a little intelligent training. Who's going to train him? Huh? Well, I shall. When? Evenings, when I'm home. What happens during the day? <laughs> Mary, all you have to do is to apply a little dog psychology. What do I do, read in chapters of Freud? <laughs> I can show you in a few seconds. Look, let, let's have him in. Okay. I'll let him in this door. Get ready. Come in, animal. <laughs> oh, he... He didn't stay long, did he? <laughs> Was that the dog? Who did you think it was, man of war? <laughs> <laughs> Animated type, isn't he? Uh-huh. He knock over anything? Only the tea wagon. It's fortunate our good china tea set wasn't on it. Oh, where is it? He knocked that off before. <laughs> what, what's he doing upstairs? I shudder to think. Hi, come down there. Come here. Come back here, puppy. Brace yourself. Here comes man's best friend. <laughs> hey, get down. Down. Great God, I'll say he's friendly. That's the Dale Carnegie in him. Down, dog. Just let me handle him, Mary. Down. That's it, please. He's down now. <laughs> he's down and so is the bridge lamp. Oh, honestly. Mary, this is Mary, a... look. I told you he was a retriever. See? He brought us something. What's he retrieved? Well, <laughs> of course, it appears to be merely a wet leaf. That shows his retriever instinct. Wet leaf, my foot, with my best suede glove, and chew to the fate of a quid. Ah, bad dog, bad. Mary, that's the wrong way to discipline him. Remember, he feels strange here. He doesn't even know his own name. He's not the only one. What is his name? <laughs> we'll have to try some names out on him and see if he responds. Dog psychology, see? You suggest the name. Well, let's see. Well, you're such a lively cuss. How about Ginger? Here, Ginger. <laughs> see that? He came to me. He likes the name. <laughs> Ginger expresses his personality. Blitzkrieg expresses it more accurately. Here, Blitz. See, he answers to that, too. <laughs> Let's call him Blip. You can't call him a name like that. Think of another one, then. You know, it's curious, but he looks a little like your Uncle Arthur. <laughs> Here, Arthur. <laughs> See that? Yeah. He looks a darn sight more like your Aunt Ethel. Here, Ethel. <laughs> See that? We'll decide on a name later. First thing is to get him calmed down. Yeah? How do you go about that? I'll show you. You get him to lie down in a special place. He gets to know it is his. Here, fella. You lie down in this corner. Down. That's the idea. See how simple it is? Uh-huh. Only he's making a dive for the next corner. No, he's going on to the third. He's playing prisoner's base. Just takes a little patience. A little patience. It's all very well for you away in your office with happy pipe dreams of a watchdog in the home. I'm the one who's going to have to do the watching. 
Mary, if you just be calm, I tell you, it's simply a matter of using a little dog psych... Look, Will, never mind the dog psychology. Run, get the mop. <laughs> Now we return you to Dinah Shore in Hollywood. Every now and then, somebody writes a fine song, and that's all, period. He just writes it. And it sits there unnoticed, just like that old statue in the city park. Poinciana got the runaround like that, and then all of a sudden, Dave Rose records it. Friend Bing hits a few licks, and it starts breaking open the nickel bank in ye local jukebox. Right here, we'd like to put in our five cents worth. with each new love, there'll be true love in her eyes. You'll dream of the new Carioca. It's been the kiss of the You'll dream of the new Carioca. When music and lights are gone and Goodbye. Two heads together, they say a better than one. Two heads together, that's how the dance has begun. Two arms around you, and let the time yours and you are mine. While the stroke carries you away, mine while we carry you. Now that you've done the karaoke, you'll never care to do the polka. 
And then you'll realize the blue hula and bambula are through. Tomorrow morning you'll discover you're just a karaoke lover. And when you dance it with each hula, there'll be two more just for you. You'll dream of the new karaoke. Kid, he said, honey, there's a fella named Old Man Trouble, and he doesn't let anybody alone. He likes to go messing around where he isn't wanted, and he likes to rub out smiles and wash people's faces with tears. He's a hard man to fight, too, Old Man Trouble, but when you look him square in the eye and sing a song at him, he's kind of got a way of backing off a little, so... When skies were dark, came Noah Dark. There's gonna be a great day Angels in the sky promise that by and by There's gonna be a great day Broadcast of the Dinosaur Program is a presentation of the Armed Forces Radio Service.
Thank mm-hmm. you.